Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The jury renders a verdict over the death of a woman's little boy. Also tonight, police seek your help in locating a wanted person. And a lawmaker marshals his inquiries on the governor's investigation to social media. In sports, green means go, and that's what basketball is about to do. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Good morning, Kiko. I am here at Docomo Walleri Branch. The Docomo staff here are super helpful with my appointment. They take good care of me in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for helping me out downloading and using the Skid Lionel app. I can take care of all my Docomo needs. No need to wait in line with the Skid Lionel app. We love you, Docomo Pacific. Better together. The Smoothie of the Month for Gold's Gym, Strawberry Mango Tropicana, priced at just $5.50. It includes non-fat or soy milk, strawberry, banana prepost, strawberries, and mango. 398 calories, 5 grams of fat, 20 grams of protein, 45 grams of carbs. Bring your own cup and save 50 cents. Smoothie of the Month, Gold's Gym, Garapin. I am the I in CNMI. We are a team, and you cannot spell team without me, M-E. Get a shot, an opportunity to set the CNMI free from COVID-19. So let's go for a save, a strikeout, a knockout punch. That's our goal. V for victory, V for vaccinate. Let's make this a team win, and we can all celebrate. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Half a day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Friday, June 25th, 2021. After a few hours of deliberation, the jury finds Stacey Lanizu guilty of child abuse. It was a unanimous decision by six jurors who say 38-year-old Stacey Lenizu is guilty. Lenizu has been charged with count one child abuse over the death of a three-year-old little boy who died last year. Chief Prosecutor John Bradley says they are grateful that the jury listened to the testimony detailing the abuse against the young boy and found the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Bradley says everyone should watch for and report child abuse immediately as it could save a life. The next stage from here is for Judge Joseph Camacho to sentence the defendant. According to Bradley, the maximum period of confinement is five years. Bradley states this case was successfully prosecuted because of the hard work of many people, including the Assistant Attorney General Colleen St. Clair, who was the prosecutor in the case. Bradley also acknowledges the caseworkers' forensic interviews from the Division of Youth Services, the investigators at the Department of Public Safety, the victim advocate, the doctors from CHCC, and many other professionals and witnesses. KSPN reached out to Lenito's lawyer, Mark Scoggins, who states they do intend to ask for a new trial. Scoggins did not wish to comment further. That request needs to be filled out next week. The jury trial took nine days. 
Witnesses who testified were Mary Tanaka from the DPS crime scene unit, Dr. Ronnie Claflin, who called the time of death of the little boy, Dr. Philip Dodderman, who conducted the boy's autopsy, Grace Callen, who worked for the household, a 13-year-old little girl who stayed in the household, and Lana Lynn Fittio, who is Lenito's partner and was also arrested for the death of three-year-old Cody Fittio. Judge Camacho set the sentencing for September 8th. The Department of Public Safety is seeking the public's help in locating a local male. Police are looking for Roland Kaipet, who is wanted for assault and battery and domestic violence. An arrest warrant for Kaipet has been issued by the court with bail set at $2,500. On June 21st, police responded to a disturbance call in San Antonio. At the scene, officers observed a female with bruises. Investigations revealed that the victim had been hit by Kaipet. DPS reminds the public that anyone found aiding Roland Kaipet to be hiding will also be arrested. Kaipet is described as having a black and gray mustache and goatee. He also has a tattoo of a turtle on his left forearm. Anyone with information should contact 911 or 664 9001. If you wish to remain anonymous, you may call the Crime Stoppers hotline at 234 7272. One lawmaker wants to find out who is responsible for the non-disclosure agreements submitted by witnesses that were supposed to testify on the governor's expenditures. Representative Edwin Propes wants to know who wrote the non-disclosure agreements and where it came from. Through a social media post, Propes asked, quote, was it Satan? End quote. The House Committee on Judiciary and Governmental Operations received a copy of NDA submitted by their first three witnesses who were supposed to testify on what they know about any of the governor's activities. The JGO committee alleges that the NDAs are between the office of the governor and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. But I wanted to let the public know that this is now being... Um, being forced on law enforcement officials who were formerly assigned as security detail to, to anybody really in the office of the governor. There is currently no evidence that backs up that statement. But according to the governor's public information officer, Kevin Bautista, Governor Ralph Torres had no knowledge of the NDAs. The governor never spoke to any officer or anyone at the Department of Public Safety regarding a non-disclosure agreement. We verified with them. We didn't sign off to anything of that effect. There was no gag order imposed by the governor on any DPS officer um, or any of the three witnesses invited to testify. All three witnesses just respectfully asked for an extension during that committee hearing about after being denied legal representation by the Office of the Attorney General, which advised the witnesses to seek personal counsel. The Democrats seem to be rushing the process to fit a political agenda. KSPN reached out to the Department of Public Safety, who states, quote, The department has been intending to issue a non-disclosure agreement to officers regarding department policies way before the current news-related inquiries. Please note that the NDA is not forced upon our officers. It is a voluntary decision to sign the form, end quote. As of press time, DPS spokesperson Adrian Panglinen has yet to respond to who wrote the NDAs and when it was issued. Casino Commission is left with less than 20 employees. The Commonwealth Casino Commission held their monthly meeting on Thursday. Andrew Yom delivered the director's report on finances, revealing that the commission will soon operate with a staff less than 20. At the end of the day, uh, this staff termination separ separation turned out to be about uh, around 60 percent reduction of our workforce. What this means, what this means is that we will have left with 16 staff members that include me and, legal, and the legal counsel. CCC Chairman Edward DeLon Guerrero states the funding situation is pretty dire, but if the budget returns, DeLon Guerrero encourages the director to expeditiously get back the employees. For those companies or agencies that have spent years, in our case, over six years of training, we bombarded just about every gaming uh, courses that the University of Nevada has made available and all their training uh, opportunities our employees have been have been uh, afforded those training for the last six years and while I understand that this is really good for the Commonwealth itself good for the individual 
it would be a tremendous loss for the gaming uh, regulatory body if we permanently lose this uh, twin. The termination letters were served on June 9th and will take effect on July 31st. Dilan Guerrero says if funding comes back before the effective date, he hopes the director will re consider revocation of the letters. But if the commission will remain under budget constraints, more actions will follow. If, however, funding continues to be not available, CCC needs to tighten its belt even more. We're to a point that perhaps maybe future meetings, uh, we may have to start thinking about uh, meeting more often on uh, video conferencing. And perhaps even the office itself will return off all air conditioning units and all other uh, appliances uh, other than the servers that they needed to be uh, chilled. YOM's director reports also includes the total expenses for the month of May. The commission's total expense was $165,192. Um, from this total expense, 71.41% uh, 70, was spent on personal wages and benefits, followed by 60.38% being spent on board and uh, other compensation. The Casino Commission is also looking into online casino gaming. More on that story Monday. Coming up is our Bob Codine. Not with sports yet, though, with food. Stay tuned. You have the flexibility to work out between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. At Gold's Gym, we call this off-peak, and it can save you money. Short-term daytime memberships on sale now, just $59 per month, and gets you access to the biggest and cleanest fitness center on island. Get yourself healthy and strong. Check out Gold's Gym today. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about 100 eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. The Tan Sri Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. We sit down tonight with Becky Delafield. She's the daughter of Dr. James Hofschneider, the former Secretary of Public Health, and she has gone into a career public health herself. Our Chris Nelson has more.
Delafield, who once taught here in the CNMI, now lives with her family in Hawaii and works for the university. She is currently involved in a study looking at maternal experiences of Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders with the health care system. The signs of reopening are all around us, including the return of one of our favorite places to eat. Sunday brunch is back at the Hyatt Regency and so are Friday, Saturday lunch, dinner, buffets. Acting food and beverage manager Seiji Shindo says they're following COVID-19 task force guidance. The recent development, basically we were able to communicate with authorities and we got a um, full inspection and now we can do a self-serve buffet. So that's what's exciting about it. You can actually yeah, approach the so. table. Yes, we still have to ask you to wear the mask mm -hmm. and also the plastic gloves at the buffet. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can approach the buffet and you can take the food for yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. My goodness, we haven't done that for almost a year. <laughs> Executive chef Zan Tomakani says new offerings feature freshness and alternatives. There's one that's uh, very different to our market, but we want to introduce it. It's a vegetarian, uh, near vegan. It's a coconut green soup. So it's 100% no cream, no animal product, it's all vegetables. Uh, so healthy options are there. Uh, you can see that as well. Uh, right on top of the salad bar, there's protein alternatives. We're uh, interested to see how our market responds to healthy options being more available. One traditional menu with a regional twist. As someone who always has turkey during Thanksgiving, I'm very interested to see Asian style turkey. There it is. Having had traditional Thanksgiving turkey uh, every Thanksgiving for the past 70 years, or 69 years, I should say, I'm going to try this uh, Asian style uh, turkey with a uh, black vinegar salad. Different. Very different. Local favorite shabu shabu available for dinner. Kehlani's handling the bread section, always bake fresh, a Hyatt signature. The Japanese restaurant may be closed now, but the cuisine is there with Kevin's sushi rolls. After hearing that presentation on the Kevin's roll, there's only one thing to do, and that's to check it out. Utilizing uh, all vegetables into the into the roll. Uh, we're using the siphon eggplants. It's roasted, and he has an avocado sauce on top of it. And then um, we have also the uh, tofu skin, which is the nari that he puts in there and he incorporates all vegetables. It, it, there's a mix and match, but predominantly it's got the avocado sauce, the um, roasted eggplants inside. You get two napkins here. <laughs> two for the price of one. <laughs> all right, we're gonna try this Kevin's roll. I've heard so much about it. I'm not a big sushi fan, I'll tell you that right off the bat. So I'm gonna be hard to please. It makes two of us. Everybody uses the word good. You see it on TV when they're describing food. How is it good? Well, I'll tell you what's good is white rice with soy sauce is good. So I'm going to try to describe this without using the word good. This one is 
spicy, crispy, crunchy, with a interesting blend of ingredients that combine to make it a very tasty side dish. So, it's good. <laughs> Let's finish with dessert. Let's try the yummy bread pudding. Mmm. Now that's what I call a happy meal. Wow, I'm going to leave, but I am leaving full, content, and happy. That was a great meal. Thank you, Hyatt. Mmm, still full. All right, it's Friday night. You know what that means. In the Sports Report, we've got our student-athlete feature. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. We're in a race whether we know it or not. Build our new normal. Enough of my lips to be out. Let's back to the HDMI. Tonight Sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas Buenas sports, sports fans. fans. Buenas sports fans, hope you're enjoying the NBA playoffs. That's the only playoffs we have around here these days. But the times they are are changing, and basketball is about to be relaunched. Saturday and Sunday, it's three on three men's, women's, and youth basketball. Clint Albert explains. We're running the season two of the 3x3. We ran the first one, uh, I believe, like a year and a half ago. We wanted to do this every year, but due to pandemic and all of that, we had to shift our schedule. So luckily, uh, we're good to go for this Saturday. Saturday is going to be in Agape Gym, and then Sunday is going to be here in MHS. 
The Mariana Islands Basketball Federation has a new board. James Lee takes over as the new prez. Longtime coach, official, and do it all Mr. Basketball, Elias Rangamar, is going back to his roots. What he loves the best. Well, we just had a new turnover, new board. So, uh, Clint is one of the board. I, I'm the development officer, which, you know, yeah. I think that now I can focus on just what I love to do, which is working with athletes. So, yeah. Uh, this is our second annual. And, uh, everybody's excited. We have uh, how many teams? What, 23 for the men's, and the women's five, and then the 16 under five. So, yeah, we were total like 80 some games. We gotta complete this weekend. Hey, try it, bro. Just try it right now. Try it right now. Yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> there we go. And on Sunday, something that we don't see around here very much. And the nice thing about it, we're going to have a slam dunk exhibition between Kobe Santos, Mac Mintock, and Eric Joe. That's going to be Sunday afternoon. Uh, watch our Facebook page and see the post for the schedule. Kobe's back. That's right, Kobe Santos. The real Kobe. Yes, sir. Oh, nice. That's very nice. Good to keep it? <laughs> yes, sir. All right, good luck. Our student athlete of the week is an up and coming runner, a speedster, if you will. Check her out. Start unknown, finish unforgettable. Young Star Shining, brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. Who was the fastest girl in middle school last year? Three words, Tamiya Kilelman Hicks. That was actually my first time running track. You did pretty well. Did you expect to do that well? Mm, yeah. Now, growing up, you always have races as kids, right? Yeah. Have you always been among the fastest for your age? Yeah, I'm actually the fastest. But that's if she takes it to the next level training right now. She's just a ninth grader who also enjoys playing soccer for the national team in Tan Holdings. Tell me about the process. Of, of the process was really simple. All you had to do was, I don't know, run, and that's pretty much it. Did you get any like technical assistance? People say, hey, like, how to line up the block? You know, you're supposed to start low. No. You're supposed to well, no, nothing. No. You just I, did it all. I just, yeah, I just. That means you have a lot of natural ability. Yeah. What do you plan to do with that natural ability? Uh, I'm not really sure, but I'll probably like join track in college, and like. I play, so, so like in high, I play soccer. Yeah, I think I'll join like, I don't know, soccer college. Only 14 years old, one of her goals could be to be the fastest anime female ever. Right now, that distinction is held by Yvonne Bennett, who ran a 12.37 seconds, 100 meters, while at Boise State University in the States. And Micronesian Games multiple gold medal winner, Rachel Abrams. Do you have goals or dreams of uh, CNMI records or winning other events, representing, you want to be on the track team? Um, I didn't really think much about it, but yeah, I think so. Young Star Shining, brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. All right, next up, a special report by one of our upcoming broadcasters. He may be in the minor leagues right now, but he's been quietly biding his time, working on his delivery, his cadence, his inflection, the nouns, the adjectives, the jokes, especially the jokes. Tonight, that dream becomes a reality. Take it away, Wes. Thanks, Bob. Half a day, Tiro, Buenos, and Aloha, sports fans. My name is Wes Rogers, and this is my trip report from Saipan. I got to do this summer is drive. We went out to Manigaha and I got to drive the boat. Then we headed to the track and I drove the Eagle go-kart. I brought my friend Kanoa and we raced. He was pretty fast but here I am holding the first place trophy. Wait, Kanoa got one too. I guess it was a tie. Then we went off-roading. After safety briefing, we were off and it was a lot of fun. Mom drove the buggy and I was the navigator. We stopped by the giant picture frame and then 
my mom and I did a big jump. We ended up at Wing Beach for sunset. We skipped rocks on the calm water and watched the colors change. On a scale of one to 10, I give it an 11. Another day, we went hiking down to Forbidden Island. You have to be careful here and always go with an adult who has experience. There is cool rock stacks down here and the snorkeling pool is awesome. We found a super cold pool and it was here that I practiced. My baseball swing and my Luke Skywalker. What do you think? Uncle Bruce and Aunt Denise took turns. And my mom tried to be Princess Leia. Pretty good too, if you ask me. Uncle Tice tried to scare me, but I knew it was coming. There were so many fish and a shark too. But we can't really talk about this now because this is a family show. I head back to Hawaii this weekend, but hopefully I'll be back soon, ready to jump right back in. Wes Rogers for the Channel 2 News. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Marianas Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Marianas Trekking. Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. So what are you going to do this year? At Gold's, a dedicated fitness studio with a cushioned floor is perfect for group exercise. The cardio room features a variety of treadmills, bikes, steppers, and ellipticals. Fitness machines will help you achieve your goals. And the largest free weight area on Saipan gives you comfortable space to work out. Gold's gym team is ready to help you get to your goals. Try harder. We know you can do it. Here's our weather report for today. The high was 89, the low was 80, 68% humidity tomorrow. We're gonna have morning showers and then afternoon clearing up. Southeast winds 10 to 15, high 89, low 80, seas three to four feet. Sunrise 549, it's getting later now. High tide at 728, low tide is at 303, sunset at 650. Uh, that's it. That's your new sports and weather for Friday. The weekend begins right now. It's official. Have a great one. See you back here on Monday.